Okay, this is a demonstration on how to go through the Excel calculations in order to size the reservoir that you need to uh, have for the design project. What I'm going to be starting with is the uh, figure that I provided in an earlier homework assignment. And remember that this figure is a chart that it shows over time what the demand is going to be in a residential area. And it's, so it's showing the temporal distribution of demand. And compared to the average day, this is showing the top curve, how the demand varies over time for the maximum day of the year. And you can see that the maximum day of the year at the peak hour has a much higher demand than the average day. The average day demand is going to be 100%. And here it looks like for the peak day, peak hour, it's about 275% of the average day flow rate. So I went through on an hour by hour basis and found what number each of these hourly flows corresponds to. And here is that effort. It's the high scale for each of the hours. Now the first column I'm going to add here is the percent of peak. And it's really going to be expressed as a decimal. If I look through here, my highest hour is at 8 o'clock when I said it, it corresponded to 274. And so each of these hours is going to be relative to 274. And I can double click through and calculate. And you can see here at the 8 o'clock hour, that's my peak flow rate. And so another thing I'm going to have to consider is the demand. And let's just say, for instance, that after my demand estimation and the, uh, the analysis I did of each loop and the exterior demands, I said that demand in liters per second for my town was going to be 500 liters per second. Now each one of you is going to have a different demand, but that's the bottom line flow demand that was at the bottom of that summary page on the demand estimation phase of the project. So what I want to have now is I want to have the uh, flow out for each hour. Flow out of the reservoir in terms of liters per second. So the flow out is going to be this peak flow rate times the demand. And I'm anchoring the demand by pressing the F4 key. And so if I double click this through, I can see at every hour of the day what the flow out of the reservoir is. And so at the 8 o'clock hour, the flow out of the reservoir is 500 liters per second. Now what we need to do is think about what flow is coming into the reservoir. And so I'm also going to have a column that's entitled flow in. And what I've told you in the handout for this project, in the assignment description, it says that the flow into the reservoir is equal to the average daily flow on the peak design day. And so here is the peak day. This is the flow rates as they vary during that 24 hour period. Let's find out what is the average daily flow here. So I'm going to take the average and find out that that flow average for the 24 hour period is 317.1. And so my flow rate in, and let me show a lot of digits here, 317.1. So uh, 317.1381. Now I could have this refer to that cell but when I reorder the columns here in a minute, I'd have to make sure that, um, that that hasn't changed because of me reordering the columns. You know, this average will automatically update when I move things around. And so 317.1381. Let's have it anchor here. And I can double click that through. And I've typed this in manually just to uh, illustrate what I mean about how when you reorder the columns, the formulas get shifted. Okay, so I've got a flow rate in. And therefore, I know that the, uh, the flow rate in is constant because the water comes from the spring to the reservoir at a steady rate, although it goes out of the reservoir at a varying rate. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the volume that comes into the reservoir, and that's going to be in terms of cubic meters. I'm going to have the volume out from the tank to the town in terms of cubic meters. And then I want to calculate the change in storage in every hour. And let's go through and calculate those before I get any further. So the volume in is simply going to be the flow rate in. And during a one hour period, there's 3,600 seconds. And now if I want to convert from the liters that the flow rate was in, to cubic meters, which is the volume measurement that I'm doing, I need to divide by a thousand. All right, 
and I can double click that through and find out the, the volumetric flow during every hour, 1141.7 cubic meters goes into the tank. Likewise, the volume out is going to be the flow rate out times 3600 because there's 3600 seconds per hour and divided by a thousand because there's a thousand liters in a cubic meter. Double click that and I'm going to examine in the afternoon I want to find when does the reservoir just barely start to fill. In other words I'm going to compare out and in and here you can see that at 8 o'clock the flow rate out is bigger than the flow rate in. At 9 o'clock it's still flow rate out is bigger than in. 10 o'clock out is bigger than in. But now at 11 o'clock that's the first hour of the day where the water coming into the reservoir is greater than the water going out. So what I want to do is I want to move this 11 o'clock hour to the top of the list. And I'm going to do that by inserting and making room so I can just drag it up so that it's at the top of the list. And the reason for that, the reason why I want it at the top of the list, is I want this to go through a cycle where the reservoir is totally empty, and then it begins to fill, and it goes up to its peak during the day, and then in this 24-hour cycle, it draws to empty again. So that's why I'm ordering it at the point of the day that I know it's empty to begin with. Now, let's just look back up here. You can see that the, uh, the average changed. And the reason for that is because when I moved that uh, 11 o'clock to the top, it uh, didn't shift the formulas correctly. So I'm just going to click on the red part here and drag it up so that that's correct again. So you, some of you may, may, may have made the mistake when you reorder it that your average got thrown off a little bit. And I typed this in manually just to remind myself really what that flow rate is. And so this 317.1381, this is the uh, flow rate into the reservoir and it doesn't change during the day. This demand is only the peak demand. This is during one of the hours. During the 8 o'clock hour I'm assuming there's 500 liters per second and during the rest of the day the flow rate uh, varies. Okay so DSDT is simply the difference between the in and the out and so the, uh, the volume in minus the volume out. And so we can see that in this first hour, uh, at, during the 11 o'clock hour, there's 222 liters. Oh, I'm sorry, this is cubic meters. And now um, I can double click that to get it to go through. So certain periods of the day, the reservoir is filling when it's positive. And when it's negative, that means that the reservoir is emptying because when it's negative, that means that the flow rate out is bigger than the flow rate in. So this final column that I'm going to do is it's going to be the accumulated storage. And it'll also be in terms of cubic meters. Since the reservoir was totally empty at the beginning of the 11 o'clock hour, during the 11 o'clock hour, the, at the end of it, there's only this much water that has accumulated inside of the reservoir, the storage reservoir. Now during the next hour we have this much net coming in but there was previously already 222 cubic meters in there and so the total accumulated amount will be how much was in there last time plus the difference from this time and I can do the same thing here it's what was in previously plus the flow in or out. And I don't need to keep typing that formula over and over again. I can just double click here and it'll distribute that through and you can see it converges to zero at the end. And so what that means is the tank is filling and it's emptying and what I'm looking for is when is it the largest during the day. And so what is the max of all of these? It says here 3129. So I go through and I find when is it 3129. And oh, it's not jumping out at me. There it is. So this is the max. This is the uh, maximum amount that's required during the day and therefore my reservoir should be at least this big. I might want to offer a little bit of a safety factor but it has to be at least this big to hold all the water that has to be stored.